Hello, and welcome to a short tutorial on how to convert um, video or how to process video using Topaz Labs' filters. Now, as you can see, I'm currently in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you that I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended. What I'm about to show you will work on all versions of Photoshop uh, that are CS3 Extended and above, and this applies both for the Mac and the Windows version of Photoshop. So uh, in Photoshop, under File, you want to open a video file, and in this case, uh, this is a short uh, clip that I found online, um, just a trailer the file. Once you bring it in, the most important thing you need to do right now is under Layer, make sure you right-click and choose Convert to Smart Object. And this is a very important step. If you had not converted to a smart object, then if you process a filter, that filter is only going to affect one frame of your video. Whereas in contrast, once you make it into a smart object, that means that now um, all of the frames will be actually affected. So now that we have a smart object, just to show you that you have really loaded the video into Photoshop, under the window, pull down to animation and just hit the play button. So now you can see how um, we have really loaded a video here into Photoshop. And now all the frames have been buffered into Photoshop. Uh, I can stop any frame, and now we can choose any one of the Topaz filters as you would do normally on a photograph. So here's uh, all the different Topaz filters. I'm going to choose Topaz Simplify 3. And this is a preset that I had done from before. Let me just reset it so you can see the, the workflow that I went through. As you know, in Topaz, you have a left side which has your presets. So I can just uh, click on a preset and immediately see effect happen. Or on the right hand side, I can see that I have my sliders. Let me reset it, and since I'm going to create one for you from scratch, we'll get rid of the, the left panel. Use a little simplify size that's going to really get rid of all the little small details that we had here. So it's going to make it be more like a painting. And I want to make this look like a black and white work of art, so we don't want any saturation. We want to bring up the brightness so it's going to look like um, we actually drew it on a piece of paper. And now you can see how uh, the dark areas actually are resembling shading that an artist would do on paper, but it's a very simplified kind of shading. So the last thing that we have to do now is introduce the lines. And I'm going to use Mono Edge Fine, and I'll crank that up a bit. Let's bring it up to, oh, yeah, that's actually beginning to look really good. So if you like the effect that you're getting, and in this case it looks very good, you hit the OK button. Now you're going to notice how the uh, Topaz is going to filter only one frame. But if you now advance to another frame, of course, now it will operate or process the next frame. Or you're welcome to go to any frame in your timeline and you'll see how your filter is going to actually affect your frame. Here in the lower right hand corner under your layers, you can see that you have smart filters turned on and underneath Topaz Simplify 3 is being applied. So you can actually apply multiple filters over here. In fact, you can then reorder these filters to see and experiment how the different orderings of your filters can affect your final image. So now, if you're happy with it and you want to actually process the video and save it out, under File, you're going to choose Export, Render Video, and this is now the Render Video Requester where you can give it a name. So in this case, let's just call this Line Art, and uh, let's put it out on the desktop folder. And you can choose either to export as QuickTime, ABI, there's all these different options over here. You can go out as image sequences, uh, which means that you can either choose 8-bit or 16 bits per channel. So if you're doing um, film quality work and you need the extra bit depth, this is a great way to put it out. Um, under the QuickTime settings, okay, let's in this particular case choose uh, compression as animation. Um, but, uh, but again, because these are just the standard requesters, you can choose any one of the, the codecs that um, Apple offers you in the operating system. And animation is just fine. And uh, in this case, we're not going to be streaming this on the internet, so I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, and uh, the frame rate is fine at 23.976, so we're going to be at 24 frames per second. And as far as the dimensions go, where it says size, I'm going to actually stick with the current size, uh, which means that I'm not going to in any way change the resolution of this. Now I could have kept it at the compressor native as well. So if you're happy with it, just hit OK. And now we're ready to save it out. And all the frames are going to be processed, so we just hit render. And we sit back and wait.
All right, now all the frames have been processed. Uh, it averaged at about uh, two seconds a frame of processing. So now at this point, uh, you can actually close out of this project. And when we look at our desktop, you'll notice that there is a little movie here or a quick time here that says lineart.mov. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on that and uh, play this for you just so you can see what you just created. Ta-da! There's the final effect. So now you're welcome to export this video into your favorite nonlinear editing program. You can take it into iMovie uh, or Final Cut Pro uh, and blend it in with the rest of your project. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial on how to process video using Topaz Labs filters.